What looks like Pepto-Bismol and tastes like sweet ranch dressing? Find out next on Junk Feud. Aw, yeah! Welcome to Junk Feud, the podcast about junk food, where we rate and review mystery treats to determine which one will be the undisputed champion of snacks. I'm your host, Mike. Alongside me, as always, Alyssa. Hey, Dad. Hey, Liz. So, where did the fruit go on vacation? Uh, where did the fruit go on vacation? Uh, I have no idea. Paris. Par- par- Paris. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a pear. Yeah. All right. I like that one. That was pretty good. That was a dad joke, a joke you tell to your dad. If you'd like to submit a dad joke for Alyssa to tell me on the show, you can send it in to us via Twitter at JunkFeudPod or via email to JunkFeudPod at gmail.com. Liz. What? Welcome back once again to the world's yeetest podcast. Yada, yada, yeah. Yada, yada, yeah? Yeah. Yitty, yitty, yeah? Yitty, yitty, you. What's going on, kiddo? We're sick. We're, well, I'm not sick, but you and your mom and your brother are all feeling a little bit under the weather this weekend. Yeah, my brother has strep. Yeah, Chase has strep, which is pretty gross. And you had a fever last night, and you're feeling a little bit better today. Yeah. And you know what? I think we should mention this. We were not feeling great last week, were we? No. <laughs> no, last week was a disaster, and we should be right uh, up front about it. White Castle was last week, as always, Alyssa, a mistake. Yeah, maybe that's what got us all sick. Well, we should have known better. We did not. We paid for it. I don't use the words gastrointestinal distress lightly, but that's probably the most accurate descriptor of what happened to us. Dang. Yeah. White Castle is so gross. I was in actual physical pain all day after eating those sliders at White Castle, and it negatively impacted like not only my body, but my mind as well. I was in a bad mood all day. Me too. Yeah, I just felt awful like all around. And in fact, you could tell I was listening back to the episode that we recorded because I was editing it. And uh, both of us had Alyssa, what we call boo-boo face on during that whole show. What is that? You don't know what boo-boo face is? It's like sad people. (laughs) Kind of. It's like a pro wrestling thing. So you know how uh, in pro wrestling, the outcomes of the matches are predetermined? Spoiler alert there, I guess, if you're like uh, more than 100 years old and didn't know that. Yeah. Right. So the wrestler who is winning and losing is known before they come out for their match. So sometimes if you look really closely at the wrestler that's going to lose the match when they come out, when they come through that curtain, when their music's playing and they know that they're going to be pinned, they'll have like boo-boo face on coming down to the ring. Like they've got that look where they know what's coming and they don't like it, but they still have to do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Nikki Bella was uh, extremely bad at this. Sasha Banks gets it a little bit sometimes too. Oh. Yeah. You know what we don't have today, Liz? What? We don't have boo-boo face today. I do. You you do a little bit because you're not excited for this. But we don't know what we're in for. We have never had this snack before today. Wait, Dad. What? We also have to say what happened last week. Uh, Okay, go ahead. What happened last week? My poor baby birds flew down. What? My poor baby birds. Your poor baby birds? I don't know what you're talking about. The eagles. Oh, well, we don't have to talk about that because I edited that whole part out of the show where we talked about the Super Bowl because I was so uh, <laughs> so upset about it. Did you really? I did, yeah. Oh, gosh. We did a whole segment before the episode kicked off where we talked about the Super Bowl and what we thought the score was going to be. We're not going to speak of that then. <laughs> it's that, that which shall not be spoken about. Yes. It's like the Voldemort of sports, right? Yeah. Well, listen, Liz, we're going to talk about snacks today, a specific snack There is some anticipation here for me, not like last week. I knew what we were expecting. I knew what I was getting into. It paid off exactly how I thought it would. But uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I am cautiously optimistic for this week, Alyssa. I don't know why. Well, you don't know why, but I think sometimes there is benefit to knowing what's coming, to being spoiled, as it were, Liz. Really? Yeah, we say like spoiler alerts all the time. Most people, I think, are against spoilers in general. But like, you know, if there's a new movie or a TV show that's out and people want to be online, they have to be very careful about the spaces that they inhabit online because there's spoilers everywhere. I was watching a show and I was like in the middle of it. I was like watching videos and then it spoiled the entire season. Yeah, YouTube videos have to like call out spoilers. The the people that make them will ask you to skip ahead if you don't want to be spoiled. Uh, Reddit threads will blank out the text 
that tells you what the spoilers are. You have to hover over it if you want to see what it says. People take this stuff very seriously with good reason. They like to be surprised. They want anticipation to pay off. That's what photomath does. Photomath? Yeah. What's photomath? You take a picture of the math equation and then it gives you an explanation on how to do it. Oh, but it doesn't show you the answer until you're ready to see it. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Man, if I had that stuff available to me when I was in school... Dad, you already got in enough trouble when you were in school. All right. Well, you know, <laughs> listen, there is uh, there is some benefit, I think, is what I'm saying here, to knowing what's coming sometimes. It's not like you're going to go and Google who is Kaiser Soze or anything like that. That doesn't mean anything to you, does it, Listen. No. No. But you have to, like, temper your expectations with legitimate information sometimes because your imagination can get the best of you. This is... Uh, I have two good examples of this, I think. One is recent. Last night we watched... What did we watch last night? WWE. Elimination Chamber, where Sami Zayn fought against Roman Reigns for the WWE Undisputed Universal Heavyweight Championship of the World, right? Yeah, it was some guy won that I had no clue who he was. You didn't know who Roman Reigns was? No. Wait, what? That did not look like him. Yeah. Yeah, that was Roman Reigns in the main event. Oh, you fell asleep before that match was over. You're talking about a different match. Yeah. Some Austin guy. Oh, Austin Theory. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Some Austin guy. That's right. Shout out to Austin Theory. Yeah. Well, anyway, the the gist of this is there were so many situations that we could think about, so much fantasy booking that we could do to see if Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn would turn out the way we wanted it to. And instead, it turned out probably the way that most people thought that it would. Uh, Roman Reigns, through some nefarious means, defeated Sami Zayn. And everybody was sad, but really that was what we should have expected. The problem I love there, Sami Zayn. I know, me too. Sami Zayn is such a great baby face. Is that like the... Oh. Yeah, his music is actually... His his song sounds a little bit like uh, Becky Lynch's song. It's got that millennial woo in there quite a bit, right? Woo! Yeah, but this is like... There were so many different ways that we could dream about the ending of that match going and so many different fun things that we could anticipate and create in our own minds. But then when it comes down to it, what you actually get is what somebody else wants and not necessarily what you want. So sometimes I think it pays off to be spoiled. And I think in particular, this happened with me and the Star Wars sequel trilogy from Disney. Really? Yeah, we went to the movies. We saw all those movies. We saw The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I thought they were all pretty bad, actually. Really? Yeah, I didn't really care for any of them. I was super into the beginning of The Force Awakens because I had waited a long time for a sequel to Return of the Jedi. It was from 1983... When Return of the Jedi came out to 2015 when The Force Awakens came out. And there were prequels in between there, but this was the direct lineage from the end of Return of the Jedi, the, the adventures only, of Luke Skywalker. The only, like, Star Wars movie that I liked was, like, one of the first ones with when Dark Vader was a boy. Oh. <laughs> when he was really little? You like the Phantom yeah. Menace? Oh, boy. Well, well, no, no, no. When he was a teenager and he was, like, dating Mary to Padme. Oh, so that was either um, Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sith, right? Yes. Yeah, both of those. But And then I like the one where Luke and Leia are little in the desert. When Luke and... Le well, at the at the very end of Revenge of the Sith, Luke and Leia are babies. They're born. No, it's it's like... I've seen this one a lot. It's... They're in... The desert in the middle of nowhere in their little house underground. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think they ever lived together on Tatooine in the desert. Luke and Leia? Yeah, because remember... Siblings. Yeah, but remember Leia was taken away by Bail Organa to live on Alderaan because they were concerned that Darth Vader was going to hunt them down and find them, so they separated them. Oh, well, when Luke was little in the desert. Yeah, when he was younger, he lived yeah. in the desert in in A New Hope when he was a teenager. That's what I meant. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the that was the first real Star Wars movie in the order that they came out. Most people would say the best or second best after Empire Strikes Back. Sure. But the idea here was that I had built up since 1983 what I thought a sequel to Return of the Jedi was going to be. And then instead, I got something else. I didn't get the extended universe. I didn't get the further adventures of Luke Skywalker. I didn't get Han and Chewie gallivanting all over the universe or Princess Leia ascending to the throne as the queen of the galaxy or any of that. Instead, I got, uh, you know, whatever Disney thought they could throw out on the screen as quickly <laughs> as possible. And yeah. it didn't live up to my expectations because imagination is limitless, but movies have budgets and schedules and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, we've got some schedules that we've got to hit because we've got something coming up that I'm kind of excited about, Liz. Yeah. And you're not. Yeah. 
and you not being excited <laughs> about something reminds me of something this week of this week's snack Alyssa up next on junk feud it's pink it's sauce, sauce. Uh. yeah as you make a disgusting sound list what do you know about internet famous tiktok famous pink sauce some girl just made it up out of nowhere and started dipping her chicken in it and people thought it was weird and disgusting so they tried it well actually that's probably the best synopsis i could have given uh Boom, show's <laughs> over this has been junk feud thank you good night <laughs> That was so easy. That was pretty good, actually. I mean, you're right. Pink sauce is a condiment list. It's a dipping sauce. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like ketchup or ranch, but it's pink. That's the whole thing. That's it. It's sauce and it's pink. And uh, people are impressed by pretty colors, so it's popular. It's literally the whole thing. Yeah. All right. But now that we have that out of our system, here's what it actually is. Pink sauce is a dipping sauce that was unveiled on TikTok... TikTok. TikTok by a young woman. Her name is Veronica Shaw. She's a single mother from Miami. Online, she goes by the handle Chef at P. Chef P. That's right. It's P-I-I. spelled P I I, but it's pronounced like P, like the princess in the P. Or P that goes in the toilet. <laughs> Yeah, well, I see where your head's at. So the uh, first video that was advertising pink sauce went live on her TikTok account on June 11th, 2020 to Alyssa and the hashtag pink sauce had more than 660 million views oh, at the time. Oh gosh. Yeah, that's kind of a lot. So Liz. Kind of. Yeah, this was just last year. What else was going on last year in 2022, Alyssa? Um. What do you remember? I had my birthday. Well, you have one of those every year. Exactly. Okay. So <laughs> Alyssa had a birthday in 2022. Chase had a birthday. Chase had a birthday. You Pretty much birthday. everyone that you know had a birthday. Everyone I know. Uh huh. Anyways, um, what else happened? Oh, the war. Yes, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine. Kind of the biggest thing that happened last year, right? We're coming up on the one year. Well, by the time this airs, we'll be past the one year anniversary of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Yeah, guys. Knock it off. That's what you were gonna say, right? Knock it off, you guys. Yeah. Leave those poor people alone. That's right. Here's some other stuff that happened in 2022. The first successful heart transplant from a pig to a human, Alyssa. Ew. Yeah, the guy. Are they still alive? Uh, no. Sadly, the the guy passed away, but not as a direct result of the transplant, as a result of some complications later on. The Large Hadron Collider turned on. It had been down for three years for upgrades. Whoa. That's a particle accelerator. The James Webb Space Telescope showed its first images to the public. Alyssa, did you see any of these? No. They are truly, truly fantastic. They made me feel so insignificant in both like the scale of uh time and space unbelievable every little pinprick of light is a galaxy um jenny and georgia came out jenny and georgia came out that's a tv show that you watch yeah yeah i don't know what that is it's really good elon musk bought twitter and that went uh swimmingly well for everyone involved and there was no controversy whatsoever at all yeah sure (laughs) sure uh the global population reached eight billion people your brother thinks that's really funny yeah chat gpt was released you know what that is no. It's a uh, transformer-based large language model and artificial intelligence. Yeah. That's kind of a neat idea. Uh, Queen Elizabeth Pele and Meatloaf all sadly passed away last year. Oh, no. Yeah, sad. And uh, the Phillies made it to the World Series. And then they lost. But they lost, yeah. And the Eagles made it to the Super Bowl. That was in 2023, officially, although it was the season started in 2022. And then they lost. Yeah, so some ups and downs all around. And Liz, what? we were introduced to pink sauce in 2022 by Chef P. But that isn't what I thought pink sauce was when I first heard that it was trending late last year, Liz, because I'm not on TikTok, so it takes me a while to catch up to stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah. The actual pink sauce that I know is also known as fry sauce. It's a French fry dipping sauce that's popular mostly in European countries, but also some Latin American countries. Liz, do you know what French fry pink sauce is? It's ketchup and ranch. Well, it's ketchup and mayonnaise. Yeah, and I didn't find out about this until I was like 18 years old. When we I went to college. For burgers. Oh, so we do make a a pinkish sauce for burgers. That's closer to like a Thousand Island dressing. We'll get to that in just a moment. The pink sauce that I'm referring to, uh, I was made aware of by a guy named Luis that lived on my floor in our freshman year dormitories. He would make this mayonnaise and ketchup mixture that he learned about from Belgium. And uh, so 
he was Venezuelan, but he lived in Curacao, which was a Dutch constituent. So even though it was like a tropical island, there was a lot of European influence. And one day, my, my buddies and I saw him in the cafeteria and he was eating French fries and he was dipping them in what looked like this pink goop. And when we asked him what that was, he said, oh, this is pink sauce. And it was just mayonnaise and ketchup mixed together. That's it. And that's what I thought pink sauce was until June of 2022. And there are lots of other types of mayonnaise, ketchup type, pink fry sauce mixtures. So if you go to like a fancy burger place or a fancy French fry place, like a Belgian frites place, you'll run into all of these sort of mayo and tomato based sauces, like the uh, the eponymous fry sauce we were just talking about. There's this thing called sauce andalouse, which adds peppers. And then what you were telling me about just a minute ago, what we put on burgers, sort of like a variation of Russian dressing, which you like to get from Sub Pub. So good. Yeah. Or like Thousand Island dressing, which is usually mayonnaise and ketchup and it has chopped up pickles and some other things in it. Oh, I have another thing to add to what happened. In 2022? No, last week. Oh, last week. Sure. Go ahead. Our our backyard is halfway done. Oh, yeah. We're having some uh, landscaping work done out back and just it doesn't got... look like a complete war zone anymore. It looks like uh, like a war zone that is slowly being rebuilt after time. Yeah. We got a pool put in. Yeah, sure. That's going to be fun for the summertime. Yeah. So, Liz. What? You know what else is fun for the summertime? Fries. <laughs> I was going to say grilling burgers and putting a pinkish burger sauce on top. Can we and, have burgers uh, tonight? Can we have burgers tonight? No. We are... Uh, so, your brother, because he was delirious from the fever that he has for his <laughs> strep throat, asked for dinner tonight. He said he would like Thanksgiving chicken, which by he, by that he means turkey. Oh. <laughs> so, we're going to have some Thanksgiving chicken tonight. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Liz, if we wanted to, we could buy some pre-mixed pink sauce and put that on our Thanksgiving chicken. You can get it uh, in jars by the Goya brand. It's popular in Puerto Rico. Or in a plastic squeezable bottle by Heinz, which they have branded their pink sauce as mayo chup, which is a very unfortunate name. Combination of mayonnaise and ketchup together. Yeah, it sounds gross. It, it does sound nasty when you say it like that, but that's it. It's just a simple thing. It's quite nice, actually, if you have real like fry sauce, like pink sauce, you get some acidity and sweetness and tang from the ketchup. There's a little bit of unctuousness, some fattiness and bodiness. Bodiness, that's not a word. Some What's fat bodiness? <laughs> bodiness, you know, what you get from mayonnaise, like uh, creaminess, sort of yeah. in a way. So I was naive. I didn't know that that was a thing until I was older. And I had to actually develop a taste for mayonnaise to appreciate it because I didn't like mayo when I was a kid. But now I like it. It's a great accompaniment to fries. But, Liz, what? the fry sauce we were just talking about gets its pink hue from red ketchup and white mayonnaise, combining to make this sort of like rosy blush. Do you know what TikTok's pink sauce gets its tone from, Lissa? Dragon fruit. Dragon fruit. That's right. What the heck is a dragon fruit, Liz? It's, uh, it's a fruit? Yeah, it's a fruit. It's a it's nickname. Pink? Uh, sometimes it's pink and purplish. That's right. Dragon fruit's a nickname for a fruit that's called a pataya. And it grows all over the world, but it's indigenous to Mexico and Central America mostly. But Liz, it's pink inside. Yeah. Yeah, like a really bright, beautiful pink, or at least the red ones are. There's white dragon fruit as well, which is not as pink. But in addition to having a good color, it's got a cool name. It's called dragon fruit, which is awesome. Oh, I was online and I saw this thing called death fruit. Death fruit. That sounds foreboding. It looks like unripe corn, <laughs> but then you like tap it and like the green stuff comes off when it's ripe. And then there's like a bunch of like this fruit underneath. People say it tastes like banana, mango, and pineapple all together. Wow, that's a good mixture. Yeah. So I haven't had a dragon fruit in a while. I don't know exactly. I don't remember exactly what it tastes like other than it was sweet and a little bit sour. I've never had dragon fruit except for a Starbucks drink. Oh, that's right. You had the dragon fruit drink from Starbucks. Did you like that? No. No, you didn't like that. So, well, it'll be interesting to see what you think of the pink sauce today then. Yeah. Liz, in addition to having a cool name... Uh, dragon fruit really looks awesome. It looks kind of like a video game fireball when you look at it from the side. It's got these these petals that look like dragon scales on it. So it's really cool all around. It's got a lot of small seeds. Uh, the eating experience, I've been told, is sort of like a kiwi as a result. Really? Yeah, like a fleshy fruit with a lot of little tiny seeds in it. Well, I know what a dragon fruit looks like. Well, yeah, of course. And Chef P says she stumbled upon using the ingredient in her pink sauce because, get this, she suffers from anxiety and she says the dragon fruit has high levels of magnesium, which helps her with her mental health struggles. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. So, Liz, who is Chef P exactly? 
A girl? A girl, that's right. So <laughs> on her official website, thepinksauce.com, Veronica Shaw, who's professionally known as Chef P, describes herself as an expressional artist. I don't know what the word expressional means. I'm not sure that is actually a word per se. Expressional but is a word. Dad. Expressional is a word? Like if you're expressing something? Uh-huh. I don't know. So what's an expressional artist then? A person that expresses their feeling through an art. Wow. Yeah. I guess that's uh, that's pretty good. There's a little bit of parsimony there. Some elegance to that definition. My poem. I'll Mr. buy it. Mr. Shapiro would be so proud of me. He would. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Shapiro. Liz, uh, Chef P says she's been fascinated by food since she was eight years old. In some interviews, she has stated that she has no official culinary training, but she has occasionally worked as a private chef for friends and other clients. And she also identifies as a mixologist and says that she is a certified bartender. So she has at least some passing familiarity with food and how to prepare it. And really, though, Chef P is someone who wanted to be an influencer, Alyssa. She is someone who wanted to be famous on the Internet for any reason whatsoever, whatever it took. Wow. Yeah, so before Pink Sauce became her breakthrough hit, she was making a whole bunch of other videos on Instagram and YouTube and TikTok, and some of them were about beauty products, and some of them were about hair care, and a lot of them were about sort of discredited fad diets, and she was making all of these videos in attempts to go viral. So this wasn't a case of something uh, where somebody was making something that they were doing anyway, and it garnered popularity all on its own. This was a case of someone specifically setting out to become famous online, and Liz... What? It worked. Well, yeah, it did work. Yeah, Pink Sauce is a legitimate product now. Chef P is internet famous, and you can buy her products in stores. And in fact, Lissa, this all was sort of like specifically engineered by her in a way. Although Pink Sauce showed up for the first time on TikTok in the summer of 2022, it was actually an entire year before that on Instagram that Chef P was posting videos of her eating a homemade sauce that she made that at the time she was calling Pink Ranch, and that's kind of an important point to note there. She herself called it Pink Ranch. So it wasn't until she put it up on TikTok the next year and the algorithm picked it up and things started to spin up. And again, the whole thing, the entire thing, was just that this was a dipping sauce that was pink and it looked cool. And it looked really nice in the video of her squirting the pink sauce on a chicken wing and eating it. And the first videos that she made, it was like this really deep, rich, like Pepto-Bismol shade of pink. Liz, do you know what Pepto-Bismol is? It's a medicine that yeah. has like a dog on it. Uh, <laughs> it's a medicine that has a dog on it. It's, uh, well, it's, um, it's medicine that helps settle upset stomachs, which we could have used some last week after White Castle for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so people thought this was weird and oh. odd and colorful, and so they wanted to put it in their mouths. Yes, you know Liz. what else is weird? What's that? So I was like doing research on her, like looking at her videos and stuff, mm -hmm. and every time she eats it, it's a different color. Yeah, we're going to get to that in just a moment. <laughs> Hold that thought, kiddo. That's important. <laughs> Here's the other thing, Liz. Uh, this is not the first time that TikTok has made something edible go viral. Well, yeah. Of course not. I, you know, and I don't, I still don't like that terminology paired with food. We shouldn't be talking about viral food. That sounds disgusting. Why? I, I kind of like. Do you want to eat a virus? Viral. Like. Yeah. Internet. Yeah. Viral internets. Where do you think that word comes from? Stop, dad. <laughs> it's, it's gross when you think about it, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Right. So we did an early episode on those slime liquor bottles. Yeah. Which were viral food. They were uninspiring. Uh, there have been various times over the past few years interest in things like cloud bread. Do you oh, remember I cloud did not bread? like cloud bread. Me uh, and Ella made it. Uh, you've also made pasta chips. You like those. Oh, those were good. I made those multiple times. Butter boards were kind of a hot thing over the holiday break. What's a butter board? Uh, you know how we put out like a snack board with meats and cheeses and stuff? Yeah. A butter board is like a board, but it just has different flavored butters on it and you dip stuff in the butters. Yeah, you're making a face now. We can't see this because this is uh, radio. Okay. Uh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, there was a baked feta pasta thing that was uh, popular for a while a couple years ago. Even Kenji, J. Kenji Lopez-Alt, the uh, uh, food scientist online, said that that was pretty good. It Pe looks good. It does look good. People like all those whipped drinks, like the oh, whipped coffee. You like that I stuff. I like that. There was even a moment last year, list when there was a thing that was called Healthy Coke online. It was just seltzer water with balsamic vinegar in it. Not it was good. popular. Did you try that? Yeah. Oh, you tried it and it when wasn't I was, good? When I was home alone. Oh, gross. Well, I'm glad you cleaned that up before we got home. Yeah. Recently, Liz, the new internet food sensation is a drink called Prime. Yeah. Do you want to tell your story about Prime? Okay. So, so 
allegedly, they sell Prime at this place called GNC. Yeah. Energy drink store, yada, yada, yada. Sure. Whatever. So we went there. And why did you want to go and get Prime? Because Christian, my friend. Shout out to Christian. Uh, so we're going to tell this whole story, right? Okay, go ahead. So Christian likes to sell Prime at school. Mm, like, a young he, entrepreneur. Like He doesn't sell it, but he like, people like, he's like famous, quote unquote, for it. Christian is famous at school for selling Prime energy drinks. But he doesn't sell it. He just shows people that he has it to make him look cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> so then anyway, what he does is he, um, if he were to give a bottle of Prime to someone, he would tell people that my friend Rishi gave it to him so that people wouldn't go up to Christian and ask for it, but they would go up to Rishi for it. Oh, very tricky. So anyway, so Christian has Prime at school, which makes you want to get your own Prime. Yes. So So we went to GNC because you heard that they sell Prime energy drinks there. Or excuse me, Prime drinks. There's energy drinks and there's also like a sports drink. Yeah. So they had the Prime energy drinks, but like I'm not allowed to have those. Right. So we were looking for the regular Prime and we walked in the store and my dad decided to go up to the man and goes, "Uh, we're looking for these stupid TikTok Gatorades. And the man goes, nope, sold out before he could even get the word out. Right. So this guy was standing in the front of the store waiting for children like you to come in and say, we want the Logan Paul drink. And he was just waiting to tell people that they didn't have any because it seemed like all day long kids had been coming in saying, we want Prime. And he was just had to tell them that it was sold out. We want Prime. So yeah, we we said, we want the stupid internet Gatorade. And he said, sorry, folks, Moose out front should have told you no Prime here today. So this this is the problem with viral food sensations. One of the problems, I should say, with viral food sensations. The uh, other problem, aside from availability, is that popularity does not necessarily mean quality. So here's what happened with Chef P. She struggled a little bit at first to productize and monetize her creation because people clearly wanted the pink sauce. And so she was making it and selling it at first out of her own home kitchen. And there are a lot of reasons why people don't do that kind of thing. A lot of them have to do with scale of operation and health and safety concerns. And it seemed like at each turn in this story, there was some sort of problem with and, FDA. Well, that we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. Even though they probably all could have been rectified pretty simply by someone with just like a modicum of business experience, Chef P was seemingly going at it alone and very publicly because she was making TikTok videos of like every single thing that she was doing. And she seemed to have at every turn exactly the wrong response to every controversy that came up. So here are some of the things that happened. You brought this up first. In each video that she made about the pink sauce, the color was different. different. Yeah. So people were interested in this thing solely because of the color. It's half of the name. It's pink sauce. Yeah. So at first, it's like this deep fuchsia in one video, almost purpley. And then like in the next one, it was sort of this anemic apricot looking color, like almost orangey. And then there's like a light pink one and a dark pink. That's right. So uh, when people brought this up, she said, oh, it was just the lighting in the video. And then she also said, oh, well, sometimes I change the recipe. Uh, And then later she did an interview with Glamour Magazine where she said that it was to avoid people having an issue with too much red pigment in the food. Remember when we talked about that with Frankenberry? What happened when there was too much red dye in the product? Don't people, can't people like get cancer from that? Uh, No, you don't get cancer, but you might have some issues with your bowel movements. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So the product was inconsistent, but that's kind of normal with homemade condiments. And instead of just saying that, she, you know, went through a a number of different iterations of trying to explain it. So it didn't help either that she refused to tell anybody at first what was actually in it and how it was actually made or what it actually tasted like. And a lot of that was just marketing, trying to get people to buy it to find out for themselves, I should say. It was an attempt to protect her intellectual property, which that part was actually a good idea for what it's worth. Yeah. So next, she finally figures out how to produce it at scale and package it for sale. And then there were these problems that she had with shipping. Do you remember this? You showed me some of those videos. Um, People were buying too much of it. Well, people were ordering a lot for sure. She made a bunch of videos of the process of her packaging the bottles of sauce for sale. So it was easy. She did it like hand by hand though. Yeah, she was doing it by hand. It was easy to see where things went wrong. She was packaging the sauce in these plastic bottles with little yellow flip top lids they looked a lot like duke's mayonnaise containers yeah and then she was dropping them one by one into mylar mailer bags which are just thin plastic 
bags. There was no other packaging. It's not in a box. It doesn't have any stuff to hold it in place from bouncing around. And so what happened was some of them broke in transit. And remember, again, this was over the summer, so it was really, really hot out. Ew. Yeah. So what happened was the jars that the containers that broke when they were being mailed would spoil. They would go rancid in the container. So when you would open up the bag, uh, it would be like rotten sauce inside of a plastic bag, which is pretty gross. Now, we should say, in fairness to her, this kind of stuff happens all the time. Things get broken in the mail. Not They don't go rancid in the mail usually, but things break in the mail. The problem is that when your entire business is based on viral videos, people are naturally going to make responses <laughs> <laughs> of their with their own videos when their $20 bottles of dip shows up all explodey and that's what happened people made a bunch of response videos showing them opening these broken and rotten packages of pink sauce yeah and it kind of got blown out of proportion but here's the thing that didn't get blown out of proportion list that i mentioned just now she was charging $20 per bottle for pink sauce Oh, gosh. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So naturally, people were ready to attack when they found out how much this pink dressing was going to cost them. What's a bottle of ranch dressing at the grocery store cost this? Like a dollar, like two dollars. Yeah, like a couple bucks, right? This was $20 per bottle. So it seemed like a cash grab, which it was, and everybody already knew that. But the big round arbitrary number made it real when people started to see those dollars moving out of their accounts and into hers. The issues didn't stop once people had the sauce in hand, because that's when they noticed, Alyssa, the nutrition label, which was just clearly made up. Really? Yeah. So she blamed this on uh, typos on the part of the graphic designer. But uh, it looked like... Yeah, this oh, is all, yes. Yeah, this, I read about this. It was like people were like doing these reviews and it said... There were so many typos just on one label. Yeah, there were a lot of weird things with the label. So my guess is that Chef P thought or was told that the sauce had to be labeled to be sold. So it looks like she just kind of made up some numbers and slapped them on there. So the first thing was the label said that a serving size of sauce was one tablespoon. Now that's pretty normal. It's usually like one or two tablespoons for a, a dressing or a dip. Yeah. But then the label said there were 444 servings in each bottle, 444 tablespoons in the bottle, which would be way too much. That would be like 14 pounds of sauce. Yeah. It's more like 30 to 40 servings, which she later amended it down to once she realized that she had conflated the uh, amount of grams per package, the weight of the product, which was actually 444 grams in the bottle with the amount of servings. So uh. that was fixed. But past that, the... Uh, the amount of carbohydrates was wrong, which was problematic for diabetics, for example. The amount of fats that were listed didn't add up. The calorie counts didn't match the sums of the other values. Uh, people thought there were some ingredients that might have been left out. The word vinegar was spelled incorrectly. So like the whole thing was all jacked up. Oh, and uh, instead of like acknowledging the fault and fixing it, Chef P again made a video and said, I'm not a perfect person. I She's make like, mistakes. I'm just a person. People make mistakes. Right. Which is fine. And it's true. But it's difficult to uh, to go that route when you're charging people 20 bucks for your product. Right. Yeah. So there was a little bit of backlash to that, too. Now, one of the things that people thought might have been missing from the ingredients was any type of preservative or shelf stabilizer. And in particular, some people were concerned that some of the fresh ingredients that were listed, like dragon fruit and garlic and milk, for example, might potentially harbor dangerous particles that could lead to things like botulism. So that was a whole thing. And it turns out that was probably overblown. The uh, acidity level of the dressing of the sauce would probably be acidic enough that it would inhibit the growth of any type of botulism. Yeah. Right. Botulinum toxin, I guess it is. So in fact, there happened to be this a lot of wild claims online of people getting sick from eating the pink sauce and in some cases being hospitalized. And then, do you remember this? There was even one story about a guy that died after eating the pink sauce. That's not true. Yeah, you're right. It's not true. It turns out this was mostly internet fakery as far as anybody could tell. There were no verified reports of anyone being sick or hospitalized, which made a lot of sense because there were all these videos of people trying the food and reviewing it and nobody was getting sick. Uh, there was one single reddit thread about a child being hospitalized after eating it but that was since deleted and the account was closed so again probably fakery there and the guy that claimed to have died after eating the pink sauce made a video himself saying oh sorry no i didn't actually die i faked my own death for internet popularity oh my 
gosh. And uh, to prove a point, which he didn't really say what it was. And then he made this video of himself sitting in his car and apologizing for causing anyone harm because that wasn't his intent. So that guy was kind of a total dingus, all things being equal. Yeah. Yeah, very goofy. Now, I think, Liz, the biggest deal for a lot of people, the deal breaker in some cases, was that you can't just sell a food product on the open market out of your own home kitchen. Well, in some places you can, actually, and this plays into it later because she was in Florida where there are these things called cottage laws, which actually makes it okay to do that. But for the most part, there are things like regulations and such that are designed to keep people safe, uh, sort of prevent this kind of on-the-fly entrepreneurship, and with good reason, because people could legitimately get sick if uh, certain guidelines weren't followed. And in fact... This is what you were talking about earlier, Liz. FDA. Yeah, there's an entire agency that's responsible for regulating food, and it's called the FP, uh, the FDA. FDA. Yeah, that's right. A lot of people on TikTok were, shell- were telling Chef P that it was a problem that she didn't have FDA approval to sell her product. But Oh, Dad, can I say something about yeah, her Yeah, go doing ahead, that? please. So when she went live after people were like being crazy about that, and she said, FDA is drugs. I'm not selling medication. Ah, And then I don't think she knew what FDA meant because she was telling people that she wasn't selling a medication because FDA means drugs. Ah, that's right. So here's the thing. Even though she sounded like a bit of a goof saying that and people kind of clowned on her a little bit, in a way, Chef P was actually right, Alyssa. So the FDA does not pre-approve food products for sale. They do require producers to follow a set of guidelines for production. But, uh, you know, a normal business would usually like submit a product for assessment, accept recommendations of the governing body. And instead, of course, what you said, Chef P made a video on TikTok claiming that she wasn't subject to FDA guidelines because she didn't make a medical product, which of course was conveniently ignoring the fact that the first letter in FDA is F for for food, food, which a private chef should be aware of. But she was rightless. The FDA does not offer pre-approval for food products. So when people said you need FDA approval and she said, no, I don't, that's only for medical products. She was actually correct. Really weird. Yeah. Yeah. She also said that her video had been edited down to make her look bad, which again was one of those things that probably didn't need to be said. So that was another issue, uh, a pretty good example of how internet celebrities find all these glorious ways to screw things up very publicly. For themselves. <laughs> for themselves at every opportunity. Uh, but she was she was not completely in the wrong there, even though it looked really bad. But yeah. Liz. What? There is, in fact, a happy ending to the story for Chef P. Yeah. Yeah. On January 11th, 2023, Chef P's pink sauce began showing up on shelves in Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. She got an actual product rollout, which was a partnership based on uh, an agreement that she has with a company called Dave's Gourmet, which is a San Francisco-based specialty foods company started by a guy who designed what he called the hottest hot sauce in the world in order to control drunk people that were frequenting his burrito shop in Virginia. Wow. Yeah. Liz, Grandpa used to be into like hot sauces. And the first like really bougie boutique hot sauce that he got was this stuff called Dave's Insanity Sauce, which was the product that spawned the company, Dave's Gourmet. He got this, uh, I think on a business trip one time when we were kids and it was, he brought it home and it was hot. This was like the first really popular stunt dare kind of hot sauce. Now there are thousands of clones. And if you watch Sean Evans on Hot Ones on YouTube, sometimes they still use the Dave's sauces on there. Oh, I've seen hot ones before. Yeah, that's right. And sometimes they will put the Dave's Insanity or other types of Dave's sauces up there. And that's from Dave's Gourmet, which is the company that partnered with Chef P to officially release in wide distribution the pink sauce. And now we have some of it right here. The new product is, I would say, Alyssa, significantly different from the original $20 bottles that Chef P was hawking out of her kitchen. Uh, And it definitely has FDA oversight this time, for sure. Yeah. So I think the big takeaway from uh, from this for us, Alyssa, is, uh, and we've talked about this before, you should not believe everything that you see online, right? Yeah. Like if you're a little kid, you're probably not going on all expenses paid business class flights to Dubai just because that's where you wanted to go for vacation that year. There is obviously some money and influence behind that. Uh, there are fake social media influencers with fake private jets. Uh, they are sets that are set up out in LA where you can go and take a picture in what looks like a private jet. 
you yeah. pay to rent it for a little while. Andrew Tate didn't really have all of those cars and nice apartments. He lived in squalor, just like most other people that he was uh, marketing to. Um, and Alyssa, what? the story of Chef P, when you remove it from all this TikTok insanity, is really a timeless story of the success of a small business that grew too big too fast, made all of its mistakes in public in a sort of moderately embarrassing way. Yeah. And in that way, it's kind of like Ghostbusters, sort of like right down on the uh, the insistence of fealty to a three-letter government agency. Yeah. That's kind of neat. Kind of a nice parallel there. So yeah, Chef P was kind of a goof. Um, but she sort of exemplifies the fact that you shouldn't just buy things because TikTok told you to, and you shouldn't rely on internet strangers for any type of real influence over your life. You can opt out of this kind of stuff if you want to. There's no law that says that you have to be on TikTok. You'll be okay if you don't buy food from strangers on the internet. Good job with your life lessons, Dad. Thanks, Pac. Life goes on. We'll still all be friends. Junk Feud will still be your favorite podcast. And Liz. What? It's now time for my favorite part of this show. Really? Alyssa reads the ingredients. Okay. So we have two different sets of ingredients because we tracked down the actual ingredients that were in Chef P's original pink sauce that she sold on TikTok. And uh, then, of course, we read the label for the bottled sauce that we bought at Walmart. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's hear it, kiddo. So her original sauce was made of water, sunflower seed oil, raw honey, distilled vinegar, garlic, pitaya, pink Himalayan sea salt, and less than 2% dried spices, lemon juice, milk, and citric acid. Yeah, I mean, that's all pretty simple. There's not a lot of uh, crazy stuff in there, is there? No. No. So let's hear what the new Dave's Gourmet Partnership bottled sauce contains, Liz. Wait, there was no dragon fruit? Pattaya is dragon fruit, remember? Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> the bottled sauce is dragon fruit puree, canola oil, coconut cream, water, sugar, distilled white vinegar, garlic, malto, dextrin, Ranch flavor, maltodextrin, onion powder, natural flavors, modified food starch, salt, spices, contain 0.5% or less of xanthan gum colored with titanium dioxide, preserved with sodium benzoate, potassium sorbate, citric acid, and calcium disodium, EDTA. Yeah, so immediately there's a, a bunch of stuff in there that doesn't exactly sound like food. Yeah, like Lots of preservatives else. and such. I think there's some other interesting things in here too. Dragon fruit puree, puree is the number one ingredient in this one. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of dragon fruit in here. There's coconut cream, which was not present in the original sauce. And then there's also something identified as ranch flavor, which is probably like one of those dried packets of... Ranch. Ranch flavoring, yeah. So like the original sauce, she called pink ranch because it was it was probably just ranch with some dragon fruit powder or puree mixed into it. And now we are back to almost exactly that same thing here. Yeah. So Liz, let's get to the rules of the game. Are you ready? Yeah. Junk Feud is a culinary clash to see which treat will be crowned the undisputed champion of snacks. It's a King of the Mountain style battle in which the reigning champ takes on a new challenger each week to see which snack reigns supreme. And Alyssa... Yeah. The reigning defending undisputed champion of snacks is... Butterbeer. Butterbeer. Butterbeer slid through White Castle sliders last week the same way those sliders uh, slid, slid through us. That's gross. right through our mouths and right out the other end. Ew, gross. Wait, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I was learning, I was like listening to some girl that sounds exactly like Hermione. Okay. That's it. That's the whole story? Yeah. Well, all right. I'm not an owl. <laughs> uh, anyway, Butterbeer was successful in its first title defense last week. Yeah. And today, Liz, to introduce our challenger, we are trying... V. Pink sauce. Yeah. Yeah, we picked up a bottle of FDA... Approved. Well, not FDA approved because they don't approve stuff, but, oh, yeah. uh, you know, FDA... Stuff. <laughs> sauce. <laughs> we picked up a bottle of pink sauce from our local Walmart, where it is exclusive until July. After that, you should be able to get it anywhere. It retailed for $7.78 on shelves. It's uh, $9.99 plus shipping online. Either way, it's too much. There was plenty of this on the store shelves, which is good. It's a far cry from 20 bucks, but this is what we have. So, Alyssa. Yeah. It's crunch time. Crunch time. We rate our snacks using a tier list from sprinkles to fun dip. Sprinkles to fun dip. So snacks can be graded A, B, C, D, or F with the very best treats earning the elusive S tier ranking. 
the... The following contest is scheduled for one serving. One serving. And is for the undisputed championship of junk food. So, Liz, describe the uh, layout that we've got here to try the pink sauce while I open it up. Okay. So, we have stuff to try it with. We have bread, carrots, celery. Those are my favorite pretzels, Dad. Good to hear. Wheat thins. What are these? Tostitos? Yep. Uh, pita chips, french fries. I'm shaking the bottle. Ugh, that sounds gross. It does kind of sound gross. You know uh, what it looks like? It looks like a strawberry banana smoothie. Yeah, you know what it kind of does? It looks like the angel food from Smoothie King. Are there any mistypos? There are no typos as far as I can tell, but it does say some separation is normal. Shake before using and refrigerate after opening. The original label, even though it did require refrigeration, did not say that it needed to be refrigerated after opening. So we're looking at a serving size of two tablespoons this time, 100 calories per serving. So 50 calories per tablespoon. We already read all the ingredients. The bottle looks different obviously, than the bottle that was sold online because that was a plastic squeezy bottle. This is a glass bottle. It looks like a salad dressing bottle. The label says, as seen on TikTok and Instagram, pink sauce. And Liz, what color would you say that sauce is inside there? It looks like um, coral pink. Yeah, it is pink-ish. It is not the deep, bright fuchsia pink of the original TikTok famous, Instagram famous pink sauce. Yeah. This is almost orangey yeah. in a way. So it's a very pale pink. There are lots of specks of things floating around in it. I'm guessing I'm some of those some are... Ranch stuff. Yes, yeah, some of the seasonings and also some of the dragon fruit seeds. So let's open this up and take a whiff. Okay, it's an interesting smell. It smells like ranch dressing. Oh, it's on my lip. It sm- <laughs> <laughs> you got a little too close there. It smells like sweet ranch dressing, which is what it was is mostly described as online. So let's I see. I guess what it's supposed to be, really. We're going to pour some into a ramekin here. A ramekin. That's such a fancy word. It is, but it just means a small bowl. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I'm stuck on my chair again. Okay. All right, so we have a small ramekin of pink sauce here. It looks like pink ranch dressing. It smelled like pink ranch dressing. Yeah. Let's try it out. We've got french fries, some baguette, some crudite. Crudite. Baguette from London. Uh, Is is this not the one from London? (laughs) No, this is a baguette from Costco. Costco. Baguette. Some wheat thins, some pita chips, some tortilla chips, some pretzels. I'm going to I'm gonna start with probably the... I tried to have everything as neutral as possible so we could get the flavor of the dressing, of the pink sauce. I'm really scared. So here's some pink sauce on a pita chip going in. All right, so initial reaction, it's not bad. Tastes like sweet ranch. It tastes a little bit like sweet ranch. There is that undertone of coconut creaminess in there. I could definitely see somebody putting this on like coconut shrimp or pairing it with some seafood it's got that sort of like islandy flavor to it because of the coconut now when chef p eats it she eats it on fried chicken wings we don't have any fried chicken wings but we do have some wendy's french fries here so that'll satisfy our fried food requirement let's try it out i didn't like that one it's a little bit sweet a little bit sour a little bit tangy there's a little bit of heat to it like a little bit of a chili pepper undertone yeah so i'm gonna try with a carrot because i think that's the the most reasonable pairing based on our history with carrots and ranch I'll say, Liz, it's fine. The packaging says exactly what it is. It's a pink label on a pink bottle that says pink sauce. It's kind of pink. It's not exactly the pink color that I think everybody would have preferred, but it looks pink enough. It smells like sweet ranch dressing. It tastes like sweet, coconutty, creamy ranch dressing with a with a nice, garlicky, spicy, peppery kick on the back end. If this was a sauce that somebody had created in like a fancy restaurant, and they only had it there, and they called it something different than pink sauce, and they weren't like a goober on the internet trying to sell it out of their kitchen. I think people would probably go pretty nuts for this. I think people would like it. Yeah, if you paired this up with like a grilled shrimp skewer at like a Margaritaville or something like that, I think people would be all right with it. I just cannot get over how it looks like a smoothie. It does look a lot like a smoothie. It looks like, just looking at it in the ramekin, It looks like if you took ranch dressing and you mixed a little bit of ketchup into it. It's exactly that color and consistency. I bet that's probably what it is if it wasn't for like the dragon fruit. Well, it's dragon fruit and coconut mixed into ranch dressing. That's that's essentially what all of those ingredients are. I kind of want to try the bread. Yeah, go for it. But I will say, I'm like, you were dreading this. I was a little bit excited. There was a little bit of anticipation built up. I'm not disappointed in this list. I'm disappointed in the backstory. And all the rigmarole that it took for it to get to us here. It's kind of good in the bread. Yeah. Liz, I like pink sauce. 
I think I'll probably have this on like a steak salad someday. That would be all right. Maybe with some chicken, some grilled chicken and vegetables. I think next time we make a snack board and we have a crudite platter, we'll put some pink sauce out with it. Yeah. I'm okay with this. Me too. So Liz. What? All that said, let's hit the bliss point. What do you think, kiddo? Sugar, fat, and salt. It's all in here. Yeah. What's your rating? Um, From sprinkles to fun dip. B. Wow, a solid B, huh? Yeah. That's pretty good. That's a good rating from somebody who was really, really concerned about having to eat this, honestly. Mm -hmm. You know what? I think I'm with you. I think, yeah, I'll say this is a, for me, this is a B. Yeah, I'll say a B. I I was going to give it a B minus, but I think that peppery kick at the end elevates it just enough from being like two one note. Yeah. Yeah, I'm impressed. Uh, Chef P, Dave's Gourmet, have done a good job wrangling something that was seemingly unwieldy on TikTok into an actual product that I think a lot of people will like if they can get over the fact that that this is TikTok pink sauce. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? Does pink sauce stand up to butterbeer lists? No. (laughs) That was a quick no. What? Yeah, I think you're right. I was, I'm pleasantly surprised by Chef P's pink sauce, but it's, it can't possibly, it cannot possibly defeat butterbeer. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So that means, Alyssa, without much ado, your winner and still reigning, defending, undisputed champion of snacks, it's Butterbeer, Alyssa. Yeah. And of course, Butterbeer will take on a new challenger next week. But before we get to that, we have to ask a question, Alyssa, an important question that we ask every week. Will it deep fry? Will it deep fry? Can you deep fry this week's snack? And Alyssa... No. This is a resounding no. Thank goodness. Finally, like the first actual real solid no, and no one's even thought about it or questioned it. Yeah. You can't fry pink sauce. I can't imagine that you'd want to either. You can eat it on fried foods, and I think I will at some point, but no, you cannot fry the pink sauce. Yeah. So, Liz. What? That means it's time. It's time to check out the back of the box. Back of the box. A weekly segment where we play a little game. Would you like to play a game, Alyssa? No. No? Yes. Yes. Oh. yes. What do we do if you say no? Do we just end the show right there? I guess. I guess we probably do. But this week's segment, Alyssa, is a trip to, to Mount, Mount Crunchmore. Crunchmore. That's right. On a trip to Mount Crunchmore, we list our top four items in a certain food category. And Alyssa. What? Today's topic has me feeling a little bit saucy. Saucy? Yeah. So a trip to Mount Crunchmore today is going to be our Mount Crunchmore of sauces. Okay. Liz, what are your top four sauces? Uh, ranch. Okay, that's a good one. Ketchup. Ranch and ketchup. Good. So far, I'm with you. Oh, um, no, wait, no. First is, oh, first is tomato sauce, Grammy's tomato sauce. Oh, so specifically Grammy's Sunday gravy tomato sauce. Yes. Okay. And then maybe ranch. And then we have Polynesian sauce. Oh, wow. Good choice. And then we'll have balsamic vinaigrette. Is that a dressing? That's a dressing, not a sauce. Well, you could call it a sauce, I think, if you want to. I mean, so you've got four then, don't you? No, but I want to do five. (laughs) So you're... Instead of balsamic vinaigrette, I'll do the, 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 not Chipotle, Chick-fil-A sauce. All right. So you've got two Chick-fil-A sauces here. So you have Chick-fil-A sauce and Polynesian. Yeah. You have Grammy's tomato sauce and you have ranch. Oh, I need ketchup though. Oh, one of them has to go, bud. I'm getting rid of Chick-fil-A sauce. You're getting rid of Chick-fil-A sauce. So you have Grammy's tomato sauce or Sunday gravy. Yeah. Ketchup and ranch and Polynesian. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty good. Um. Wow. Now this is a tough one here because there are so many different types of sauces. I know. I, I'm looking at a list of sauces on Wikipedia right now, and it is just, it's overwhelming because there's so much good stuff in here. And and how do you really qualify? Does mayonnaise count as a sauce, list? I don't know. I don't oh, know either. There's hot sauces. Yeah, there's hot sauces. There's- Pink sauce. There's pink sauce. There absolutely is pink sauce. You used tomato sauce already in yours. I think I've got to go with, uh, okay, so I'm going to go a little wild here, Liz. Really? Yeah. I think um, probably we can count something like, we'll start off kind of weird. I really like Worcestershire sauce, Alyssa. What is that? Worcestershire sauce is sort of like a very, very thin steak sauce that's made from fermented fish parts. Oh. 
Yeah, which is kind of weird because I usually don't like something like that. But That is good, actually. Yeah, there's a lot of umami in it. It's sort of like a base for making a lot of different uh, recipes. Yeah. Okay, so Worcestershire sauce. Lisa, I think you have to include barbecue sauce. There are so many different varieties. I don't know exactly which one to choose I'm not here. a fan of the barbecue flavor, actually. Yeah, you said that the other day because we talked about how there are those new sweet and spicy barbecue Doritos and you don't even want to try them. Yeah. I'm not yeah, a that's fan wild. Of barbecue. That's wild. Uh, I like duck sauce, but I don't think it makes the top four. Oh, yeah, not for me either. So I've got, so, so far we have Worcestershire sauce and barbecue sauce, but those are very similar. Oh, soy sauce. Yeah. Oh, and soy sauce too, sure. Steak sauce list, like A1. Oh, man. A1 bold, if it still existed, would be number one with a bullet for sure. That would knock Worcestershire sauce off. You know what? Even though it doesn't exist anymore, I'm going to <laughs> amend my list. A1 bold, number one. Barbecue sauce, number two. Specifically, I think I'll say like a Carolina style vinegar based barbecue sauce. That's just out of sight. So A1 bold, Carolina barbecue sauce. I'll say, uh, wow, number three. You mm. have to have gravy sauce. This is tough. I think I'm going to say, I'm going to say buffalo sauce, Alyssa. Really? Yeah, like a, like a really good, I've said this before, my favorite buffalo sauce was from the, like the local bar near our house, Connie Max. It's not there anymore. It's a Wawa now. Shout out to Wawa, I guess. Uh, Connie Max buffalo sauce that they made with a little bit of brown sugar and a little bit of orange juice in it, which you could barely tell. And then for the fourth one, I think I'm going to change it up, Liz, and I'm going to use a caramel sauce for a sundae. Like really? The, th- the, the really thick, sort of deep, amber-colored, really brown caramel that McDonald's uses on its caramel sundaes. If you can get to a McDonald's and the ice cream machine is working and get the caramel sauce, that's like so good. I'd put it up against any exotic or boutique caramel sauce you can I get anywhere like else. I feel like our McDonald's ice cream machine is always working. Yeah, we were lucky. We lucked out today, in fact. We got shamrock shakes there. Yeah, those were good. Spoiler alert for our St. Patrick's Day episode. We get to do that. (laughs) No, we're doing something different, but we can talk about them there for sure. Oh. And then, Liz, there are so many like Asian cuisine sauces, hoisin sauce, oyster sauce, like we get on beef with broccoli, sriracha, ponzu. Ugh, there's so much. Like fish, even just fermented fish sauce, teriyaki. There's so many sauces. Pick two more, Dad. No, I have four already, bud. Oh. Yeah, we've got A1 Bold, we've got Carolina Barbecue Sauce, we've got Buffalo Sauce, and we've got uh, Caramel caramel Sauce from McDonald's Ice Cream Sundays. That's my Mount Crunchmore of sauces. No, Grammy's Pasta Sauce? Well, n- you've got it covered. Oh. Liz, I think that's an excellent list. What do you think? For you, yes. Yeah, I liked yours too, because you had ketchup and ranch on there, which I think are absolutely have but to be on a list. the ranch has to be that like veggie dip. Oh, you like the veggie dip specifically, like the really thick one with the chunks of vegetables in it. Yes. Okay, that's a good amendment. I like that. Okay. Like I said, excellent list, Alyssa. Yeah. And in fact, this podcast should reach you in excellent condition, satisfaction guaranteed, or your money back. If you've got a question. (laughs) Thanks. If you've got a question for us, you can write to the address on the label. That's junkfeudpod at gmail.com. Alyssa, any final thoughts? No. No, of course not. This podcast has contained your recommended daily allowance of fun. Fun. For more, go to Twitter, Instagram, or wherever you choose to be social and find us at Junk Feud Pod. You can watch fun size reviews on YouTube, buy our merch on TeePublic, and don't forget to catch all the snacks in each and every week wherever you listen to podcasts. Until we see you again, for Alyssa, I'm Mike. Hot stone lasagna. Don't get any Anya. Bye.